Hey, wrestling fans, welcome to One Winged Wrestling, where we help you navigate the complex world of pro wrestling, bringing you the best matches, world-class wrestlers, and news you can count on. At One Winged Wrestling, we bring the elite to you. My name is Bill Cutbush, and joining me hopefully very soon will be Krishna Denai. Oh, there he is now. Krishna, who is flashing all over the screen. Oh, we have technical difficulties right out of the gate. Oh, my God. You know, I, I said I said I'm here, and I realized I had no mic in front of my face. And I was like, what? I'm like, wait, he's not hearing me. What the hell is going yep. on? Well, there you go. So how are you doing? Awesome start. Awesome start. Yep. Right. Uh, you know, Mondays. It's Monday, right? Like, like yeah. of course, of course, it's just it's just busy for for no apparent reason so yeah i'm here excellent let's excellent let us get to it i am also doing well but we have a lot to cover today so mm -hmm. um meaning especially right out of the gate what we're doing with this show is we are covering last night's aw double or nothing pay-per-view which took place from T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. And why don't we just get right into this? Let's do it. The show, uh, Excalibur, Taz, and JR started off on commentary. And in the pre-show, they had a little interview with Don Callis with JR. And Don Callis said, who said he, he said he did the hardest thing that he did. It's what a, the hardest thing a parent or family member could do. It was a cancer eating away at Callis. So he cut it out. And Kenny Omega was that cancer. But he tells Omega... He hasn't even started cutting yet. Previewing tonight. So awesome. we start off with Ethan Page and the guns, Austin and Colton Gunn versus the Hardys, Matt and Jeff Hardy and Hook. And the stipulation was if the Hardys team wins, Matt Hardy will own the rights to Ethan Page's contract. Both Krishna and I said that the Hardys team would win in our pre-show. So here we go. Basically, this match started off. Hook was in control for the vast majority of the beginning. You know, he, he was solid against all three opponents. He was finally beaten down and made a hot tag to Matt. Matt did a, a couple side effects to the guns, but then the heels took over the match. Um, they took down Brother Zay on the outside, pulling his neck brace off. They beat on Matt for a while, constantly stopping the tag. Matt finally managed to DDT Page, get a hot tag into Jeff. Jeff did really well when he first came in, uh, to, used a bunch of his signature moves, stacked Austin for a near fall. Um, he seemed to kind of mess something up when he did a twist of fate, and then that set kind of a cascade in motion. He went up on the ropes and slipped off them. Um, Austin tagged in Page at this point. Jeff tagged in Hook after he finally got himself untangled from the ropes, who went right after Page. And Hook, Hook was great in this match. Corner shots, fisherman suplex. Um, Page reversed, hit a roundhouse kick. Hook countered, locked into Juji Gatami. Colton broke it up. We're getting real close to the end. Match is picking up in these last few minutes. Matt gets tagged in. The Hardys hit poetry in motion on Colton, but then the guns hit 310 to Yuma on Matt. But Jeff comes off the top from the senton to break up the pin, and he that one he hit perfectly. So Hook and Page are tagged in again. Page counters the T-bone suplex with a kick, but then Hook goes for the red drum, but the guns attack him until the Hardys make the save, doing twists of fate on both guns. They then hit twists of fate on Page, and Hook locks in the red drum for the win now uh krishna you missed this match didn't you i did yes yes yeah i thought it was a decent match um it's nothing i'm going to write home about it's nothing i'll probably remember in a few years but hook looked really solid um you and i were discussing yesterday really what do they do with hook <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah. What do they do with them? Exactly. What do they do with Hook? Uh, I'd give this match like two and three quarter stars. Um, the slip moment I noticed today, people are like, Jeff needs to retire. Blah, blah. Look, people, he just started wrestling again after a few months off. Mm -hmm. He flipped on some ropes. Give yeah, the guy some, relax. give the guy a break. Relax. <laughs> just, just relax wrestlers don't have to be perfect okay um but anyway yeah it was it was a decent start and now you know i guess what's the the implications coming out of this page's contract is now in the hand of the hardys so we'll see where this goes um also in the pre-show renee brought out dr martha hart who announced the owen hart tournament it's going to begin in toronto and end at the calgary stampede Ooh, nice yes That's very nice yeah it was cool so the actual main pay-per-view opens up with the Blackjack Battle Royal for the AEW International Championship. And your competitors are Orange Cassidy is the champion, Jay White, Juice Robinson, Ricky Starks, Brian Cage, Swerve Strickland, Keith Lee, Dustin Rhodes, Penta Alzero Miedo, Ray Phoenix, uh, Kip Sabian, Trent Beretta, Chuck Taylor, Tony Nese, Ari Davari, Big Bill, Lee Moriarty, Commander, Bandito, The Butcher, and The Blade. Now, please, though you are being tested on this, you will be required to recite back that list in 10 seconds. <laughs> So Krishna and I both said Orange Cassidy was winning this match. We were both right. But, mm -hmm. you know, people sleep 
on uh, Battle Royals an awful lot. This was not a Battle Royal to sleep on. Yeah. Um, it begins with Sabian immediately trying to toss Cassidy, and it's on. Commander did his rope walk dive into Bill and Moriarty. Now, this was a moment where I turned to Christian and I said, why didn't that eliminate him? You yeah. know, he literally put himself on the top rope and jumped off to the outside and hit the floor. That should have been an elimination. But uh, yeah, oh, by, by the way, uh, both Alvarez and uh, and um, Meltzer agreed. They're like, isn't that an elimination? But anyway. I think everywhere, every battle royale that happens, and even yeah. talking about WB, that's an elimination. Oh, yes. And in fact, in Stardom, it's happened where someone did that yeah, and it turned out so. eliminating themselves and they were like, no. Anyway, uh, Bandito Commander and the Lucha Brothers then all teamed up as Bandito hit this great stalling suplex on Tony Nice, and like the, the other Luchas were just fighting off anyone who tried to get close to Bandito. It was pretty great. Davari was brought to the apron, kicked in the face by Phoenix, and then did a rope walk to get rid of both of the varsity athletes. Cage finally came in and started laying out all the luchadors. Bandito did an amazing military press on Cage, almost getting him over his head. White then eliminated Commander, who went for another rope walk, and White just shoved him off to the floor. <laughs> Apparently, if you get shoved off, it's an elimination, but if you jump off willingly, it's not. So Commander should have just jumped off when he saw White coming. But anyway, best friends in Cassidy hit a triple choke slam on Sabian, tossed him, then hugged. Taylor was dumped by Bill, unintentionally helped by Cassidy, but the Blade was eliminated by Lee. Strickland finally entered the match, jumping Keith Lee from behind. Butcher ate double Lucha Brothers thrust kicks to be eliminated. Moriarty was able to get rid of Bandito. Then Breda eliminated Moriarty with a half and half on the apron. Yes, this match was nuts. Breda then saved Cassidy from elimination. Oh, this was a great spot where a big... Uh, elimination by big bill big bill was charging at cassidy on the apron went for a big kick and uh bread it looked like he took the bullet basically like mm -hmm. threw cassidy out of the way took the shot and was eliminated himself cage eliminated lee who was too busy with strickland to notice him robinson and white sent penta into phoenix to eliminate phoenix as starks dumped robinson right after white laid out starks which led to a face-off with white and penta ending in a blade runner from white who turned around and ate a stark spear and then was tossed Robinson pulled Starks to the outside under the bottom rope. Bullet Club beat him up. Starks got back in the ring, but Bill nails him with a big boot, eliminating him. I mean, this was a good show for Big Bill. Cage was dumped by Rhodes, who was immediately smashed with a kick by Strickland to eliminate him. And we're down to the final four. Cassidy, Swerve, Big Bill, and Penta. There was a quick high speed bit from Penta before Bill took him out with another boot. He then hit a massive spinning boss man slam on Cassidy. Swerve and Bill argued over who got to eliminate Cassidy, though, and Swerve backs off. Bill went to press slam Cassidy over the top, but Swerve snuck up and dumped out Big Bill. Cassidy and Swerve then had a mini singles match. Cassidy's float over DDT was countered, but he double countered into a stun dog millionaire. But Swerve hit the kill shot. Both went down. Prince Nana interfered, grabbing Cassidy's leg, which led Swerve to hit the Swerve stomp. Cassidy came back with multiple DDTs and an orange punch that sent Strickland to the apron. Strickland brought another, blocked another one, brought Cassidy to the apron as Nana ran distraction again enough for Strickland to try one more double stomp from the top but Cassidy got the feet up and Strickland barely hang on to the ropes by one hand Cassidy looks like he's setting up for the orange punch and then just lightly kicks Strickland's hand eliminating <laughs> him from the match and uh yeah that was the end Orange Cassidy yeah. wins what did you think yeah this match is fun it was a fun um uh, you know, over the top uh, battle royale. Uh, Orange Cassidy winning was 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 great. You know, this is this was fun. It it still it still sets up like stories of you know with the whole like like uh, bullet club gold and stuff like that and Ricky Starks and and whomever. But this was fun. Like it, it was a really good match. Orange Cassidy came out on top. Um, and yeah, this like I I was looking at all the matches. How many matches were there? There were like eight. Oh man, one, two, a lot, right? Three, a lot. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oof. Ten. ten matches. Oh, plus okay. the pre-show, eleven. Yeah, so ten matches. Wow. Okay. Um, this this one based on the matches that we had. Um, like, I'm I was thinking about the list, and I had obviously two two top matches, and I have a couple of them where I thought was I had fun with right. Mm -hmm. Um, and this one actually falls in. I mean, and this is no offense to this match in any way. But I gave this match number five spot, number oh, five man. out of ten. Right. So right. I, I was I was counting it. I was, I was counting. I'm like yeah, number five, number five. I'm gonna give it number five. Um, I had so much fun with it. Um, it it, it could have went like this match could have been anywhere between three and five easily. Right. 
easily, right? Because yep. the top two, unfortunately, are reserved. They're just reserved for two other matches in the night. But like three <laughs> to five, this match easily ranking there. That's why I'm like, okay, fine, number five. I, yeah, I, if, I had fun. If, if I had to rank them, it would also be my number five. Um, <laughs> and again, it's it's a completely no offense to the guys involved. Oh. In fact, this was one of the best battle royals <laughs> I think I've ever seen, period. Yeah. I mean, this is why you don't eliminate the luchadors early, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, my God, they all went nuts in this match. Swerve was phenomenal. Um, Jay White and and uh, and um, Juice Robinson knew their role, did it very effectively. You know, like the the the, the story about the best friend saving Cassidy's ass, right? I mean, that's mm -hmm. that was great. It was just there was good storytelling exactly. throughout this match yep. too, right? I mean, yep. I gave this three and three quarter stars too. I mean, that's for a battle royal. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> yeah, that's extremely good. I really enjoyed this. I had a lot of fun. Um, I, I think, though, that the quality of that match may have uh, been a little bit of a detriment to the next match, because then we had Adam Cole versus Chris Jericho in an unsanctioned match with Sabu as the special yeah. enforcer. We both said Adam Cole was winning. We were both right in the world's most predictable pay-per-view. It starts with Jericho and Garcia beating on Cole until Sabu comes in with a chair. He duels chairs with Jericho. Then he falls off the top rope onto a onto 2.0 on a table. There's much brawling around the ring as Cole mm -hmm. and Jericho face each other in the ring. Cole tosses him from the ring, then works his hands on the steps, his legs on the ring post, trying to fulfill that promise. He was going to break every bone in Jericho's body. Jericho comes back with a suplex off the apron to the floor. He tries to powerbomb him on the table, but ends up putting Cole face first off the apron. Instead, runs his knees into the steps. He continues to work Cole over in the ring, chokes him with a chair until Cole runs him head first into a chair wedged in the corner. They fight some more. Cole finally gets out of a, a walls with a fire extinguisher. The fumes make Jericho woozy, but it was a trick to land a code breaker for a near fall. He uses the fire extinguisher on Cole and then drops it on his stomach. Then Jericho gets a kendo stick, but Britt Baker shows up, comes down with her own kendo stick and nails. Jer I mean, she beat the mm -hmm. living crap out of Jericho with this kendo stick until Soraya came out. And then Britt decides that helping her husband is no longer important and runs off after Soraya. Cole chokes Jericho with the stick, screaming at him and drops him for a near fall. But Jericho catches Cole in the turnbuckle with a chair to the face, knocking him through a table on the floor. He tosses Cole back in the ring, gets chains with handcuffs on the end, like a very long chain and handcuff but cole comes back after getting his wrist in the chair and ddt's jericho for two he then chains jericho to him now it's a wrist collar match uh cole hits the panama sunrise goes for the boom but jericho dodges him and whips him with the chain but then cole does land the boom wraps a chain around his leg hits the boom again then he hammer fists jericho on the ground until aubrey gives the match like stops the match due to you know just jericho's done he's out his eye was messed up too so, what did you think of this match? She stopped an unsanctioned match. This is true. She did. Why did they even need a referee in this match? Well, because they still have... It's not sanctioned, but it still counts. Ridiculous. They didn't say this was a lights out where it doesn't count. They just said this... it's not sanctioned where the violence yeah. can't be prevented. This Unlike match... the last match where apparently yeah, the violence could be prevented and <laughs> was worse than the it's violence not... in this match. Yeah, anyway. This match was, after the first match, a bit boring. Right. It, it, it tried. And I, I, I was I'm still kind of like, so two people took out the entire JAS. There's four of them. So two people, Sabu and um, and Strong took out the entire JAS. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. Whatever. Uh, yeah, this match just didn't. I wasn't like I thought I expected more. I've seen better from Jericho. I've seen better from Cole. Right. So when I was looking at this match, I was like, yeah, if I, if I was if someone was to say, do you recommend this match to anyone? I'd be like, no, I don't recommend this match to anyone because I was kind of bored myself. Um, so like ranking it from like number six to 10 now, um, it can fall in between there, I guess. But I, I'm going to say like around the eight, number eight spot, I'm probably going to rank it. Um, yeah. Uh, that, that that's that's i think i think i'm gonna rank it number eight i might, I might change but i'm ranking number eight okay yeah that sounds about right i i didn't rank them ahead of time but that sounds Same. like about where it would fall when i'm thinking about where these matches would go mm -hmm. um so yeah yeah about eight we both said that that you know adam cole would win you and i were both like just kind of bored with this because it was yeah. slow i mean i i so. described the action the action sounds pretty decent when you string it mm -hmm. all together but the match was slow and um 
you know, I, I wasn't, I wasn't thrilled. The level of violence was just kind of there. They clearly weren't going to bleed or anything. I don't know if we just become like oversensitive or super like, you know, desensitized to violence in AEW because it's like so much worse. We just, Oh, look, an unsanctioned match. And we're expecting more than like a fire extinguisher and some kind of, I mean, the, the, the hardest core thing that happened in this match was Brit beating the snot out of Jericho. I mean, yeah, his side was definitely. a mess. So yeah, it was, um, and that's kind of scary. I mean, she looked like she had more intensity than anyone else in the match when she came out. So yeah, yep. not wonderful. I gave it. I gave it the gentleman's three. They tr- they <laughs> tried hard. Um, you know, it's uh, it's a couple good spots, but a slow match. And uh, you know, the stop it. This ref stoppage was a little weird too, as you pointed out, right? I mean. Odd. I mean, couldn't they have just done the hand raise or something? I know. Or, or, or he's know, knocked Jericho, out. Jericho yells that he submits or he's knocked yeah. out cold or whatever. Like, I don't know. Anyway, it wasn't a great finish. And then we move on to FTR, Dax Harwood and Cash Wheeler, taking on Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal for the AEW World Tag Team Championship with Mark Briscoe as the special guest referee. So... We both said FTR was going to win this. And once again, we were right in the world's most predictable (laughs) pay-per-view. Lethal starts against Dax. They go back and forth grappling, chop battle. Jared interferes, match breaks down. They counter and counter until FTR tries double sharpshooters and Lethal Lethal and Jared bail to the the outside of the ring. They get the advantage on Lethal briefly, but he comes back, tries a fake tag that Briscoe catches. I don't even know why he bothered with that. And Cash, because he was in range to tag him for real. And Cash Mm -hmm. takes down Lethal. FTR sends Lethal out of the ring, but Jared soon pulls the rope down on Cash running, sending Cash to the floor. He tosses Cash into the barricade. They get him back. Back in the ring where Lethal Snap suplexes him, tags Jared, who it's a reverse STO, stomps Cash down, tags Lethal. You know, they go back and forth beating on him for a while. They get a figure four on him. Dax breaks that up with a diving headbutt. Cash finally makes the hot tag, and Dax goes nuts. Short arm Larry at two Germans, sheer drop brain buster for two, but then Lethal counters the next move with the lethal combination. Goes to the top. Dax stops him with chops. Jarrett and Cash brawl on the apron next to him. Jarrett sends Cash into the turnbuckle post. This distraction lets Jay chop Dax off the turnbuckle buckle but lethal takes too long to set up the elbow drop and dax catches him yet again landing the superplex ftr then land the doomsday device but dutt pulls dax off lethal briscoe then tosses dutt and sing from ringside in his first ref move of the night jarrett goes to hit dax in the head with a guitar but dax ducks and wails briscoe who goes down for a very long time like a man who's never been in a (laughs) hardcore match ftr hits the shatter machine but there's no ref Aubrey runs down, but Karen drills Aubrey in the head with a guitar to a round of booze from the crowd. Lethal lands a double lethal injection with FTR distracted. They go to hit Dax with the belt, but Dax hits a pile driver on lethal. Jared hits Dax with the belt. Briscoe recovers, but it's only a near fall. Jared then attacks Briscoe, but Briscoe slaps him, tossing him back into FTR, who then hits the shatter machine for the three. What'd you think? Uh, you know what? I mean, I didn't hate the match but i didn't love the match either it was I, it, it was mid you know what i mean like, it, it was mid so so because of that i'm gonna give it a mid mark right I, like like so what we have six seven um i'm looking i'm just looking to see what she's gonna be number six or number seven but it's falling into that category of the bottom mm-hmm. the bottom five right this definitely right. is one of the bottom five matches of the night um i'm gonna say for now let's slot it in the number seven that's fine okay. slot it in there okay. um it was just okay shenanigan city listen the ref bumps. I must give credit. The ref bumps that the refs took, like like last night, pretty insane. One one I'm pretty sure was not supposed to happen, but <laughs> but like yeah, pretty nuts. Um, but yeah, uh, seven. I, I yep. give it number seven out of ten. You you mean when the the ref is the first person to bleed in bleed. a anarchy match? Oh um, God. you know that's yeah. kind of a sad thing. Um, yeah, I, I'd probably put this. in, I'm gonna say six. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'd say Here. six. Yeah, because okay. um, I think that out of the bottom ones, it was probably the best of the bottom. Best of the bottom. <laughs> best yeah, of best the bottom. Of the, bottom. That, the ending was good. Like when they when they really got it wound up and like, yeah, it was a bit of a, a shenanigan fest and stuff, but it was a well done shenanigan fest, you know, like everything kind of hit. It made sense. It went forward, it came back. It all it all kind of went in the right direction. Right. So I actually thought this was uh, this was pretty decent. I mean, man, that sheer drop brain buster and stuff, that was deadly stuff. But anyway, we then get Alex Marvez and he's back with Ricky Starks. And Alex says, oh, you took care of business tonight. And Ricky says, I eliminated both of them. And then, of course, Bullet Club Gold jumps him. And then FTR comes in and off. 
Uh, this leads us to uh, another segment in the back. We have Jericho and Soraya together in the back. And uh, Jericho just says, you know, Adam Cole's a jerk, basically. Soraya's like, Baker's a bitch. And Jericho says, what kind of woman hits a man with a kendo stick? <laughs> Which was a great line. Um, they demand a match on Dynamite. The stagehand interferes and uh, he gets a fireball in the face. So that sets up and we get the announcement later that it will be Jericho and Soraya taking on Adam Cole and Britt Baker on Dynamite this week. So anyway, that moves us on to the ladder match. Uh, Wardlow champion taking on Christian Cage in a ladder match for the TNT champion. Chris, uh, Christian, <laughs> Krishna and I both picked Wardlow. Christian, though, comes out and he actually sends Luchasaurus to the back, making it look like he might actually try to do this match on his own. Uh, Wardlow, you know, basically starts off acting strong. You know, he does corner shoulder blocks, stuff like that, right? Christian comes back with a drop kick, though, on Wardlow holding the ladder. Then Wardlow counters Christian's follow-up plancha, taking him out of the air with the ladder and gets two tables. He sets Christian on them, but Christian moves before Wardlow can jump on him. Christian hits Wardlow with a ladder repeatedly, sets up the ladder across the rails in the ring, but Wardlow comes back and puts him on the ladder. But Christian pulls his leg out, uh, basically low blowing him with a ladder rung. Um, Wardlow comes back in the ring as Christian sets up a ladder. Now it's worth noting, Wardlow sold getting that low blow for good chunks of this match. Good on him. But Christian reverses Wardlow into the ladder and sets it up across the second rope in the corner. He then slingshots Wardlow into the, like Wardlow's face into the ladder. Christian goes up the one in the ring, but Wardlow dumps it, lariats Christian down. He goes for a powerbomb, but Christian jumps off his shoulders onto the ladder, but Wardlow stops him. He tries to jump on Wardlow, but gets power slammed instead. Wardlow then military press airplanes Christian into the ladder. That was just crazy. And then to the outside. Wardlow then, of course, sells his his, uh, groin before he heads up the ladder, but that's when Luchasaurus finally shows up. He throws Christian into the ring, who stops Wardlow, and he hits a neckbreaker off the ladder he goes for a spear but wardlow counters with an alabama slam onto a ladder he then goes for a diving senton on christian on who's lying on the ladder at this point but christian moves and wardlow senton full on hits the ladder christian hits him off the apron with a ladder arn shows up and whispers to wardlow christian goes up the ladder but wardlow dives off the ladder onto dives off onto the ladder and the whole ladder goes down it's all warped um At this point, Wardlow is going to try to go up to get it. The ladder is not working at all. So Wardlow has to go get another ladder. Like Wardlow even gets mad at the ref for trying to come and hold the ladder. (laughs) Then Luchasaurus chokeslams Wardlow. He goes to chokeslam Arn, but Arn bites his thumb bloody. Um, Luchasaurus then walks Arn to the tables, but Wardlow drills him with a chair twice. He sets Luchasaurus on the table, climbs a ladder, nails a senton through the table. I mean, this ladder was high. This was like Sammy Guevara level height stuff or Darby Allen. A holy shit chant rightfully ensues. Meanwhile, Christian sneaks into the ring and goes up the ladder. I mean, sneaks. It was hilarious. But Arn shoves the ladder and Christian falls off into Wardlow's arms for the power bomb. Wardlow climbs up the ladder at this point takes the title and wins the match. What did you think? Um, I thought this match is fantastic. I I gave it my number three spot of the night. I thought it was that, that damn good. Like think about that. I said two, two matches are reserved and this got the number three. Mm-hmm. That's, that's credit to Christian and Wardlow. Like Wardlow took some serious bumps tonight or last night. And the match was great. I didn't. The only flaw that I saw was when he tried to jump on the warp ladder, and we're like, "Dude, get another ladder!" Right? <laughs> it got to the point where I was like, "No, no, no, you need a new ladder." But that was it. Mm-hmm. The execution of this match was great. Like Christian, like I understand why he's the king of these matches, right? It makes sense. Like it was so good. It was so hard hitting. It was it was brutal. Like I some things I was just could not watch. Uh, and at the end of it, I'm like, Bravo. Bravo to the both of them. What a great match in my number three spot. Oh, yeah, this match was great. I mean, I couldn't believe it either. I'm watching, like, you and I are both like, this match, I mean, come on, a war, why are these guys having a ladder match, right? I mean, but you know what? It, like you said, the storytelling in this match was great, mm-hmm. All right. I mean, it was just done so well with Christian just trying everything he can to beat him, getting out of the way. Wardlow, Wardlow bumped like a champ and moved mm-hmm. like a champ, you know, yep, like, like, and he sold stuff and you know he didn't act like he was just some dude beating up security guards he nope. he he worked this match 
like a really solid wrestler. I was very mm-hmm. impressed. So, I mean, kudos to Wardlow. This was a deserved championship win. Yep. He fought like hell to get it. Um, you know, he had to overcome Luchasaurus. Sort of thing. Arn Anderson played his role well. He didn't do too much. He just came out and helped when Luchasaurus was there, gave a little bit of coaching, that kind of stuff. So I, I liked that. They didn't overuse him. He didn't do anything beyond. In fact, it, it looked as though his age was catching up with him, which was, you know, like, well, that's good, right? Yeah, he's out there trying. He's he's not he's stubborn. He's not going to give up. But dude, you are he's the old man who's like too old to realize he can't fight anymore. Yeah. So, yeah. But biting the thumb and the blood coming out. So that was just great. It was so good. Yeah, I I love this. This 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 was like a four and a quarter star match. I I thought it was wonderful. Um, This could have been a match of the night on any dynamite. Um, And at this point, Tony is replaced by Jr. at the booth. I mean, Tony replaces JR in the movie. He isn't replaced by JR, who's already there. So Tony shows up. And now we're, we're, we've got the standard dynamite commentary team for the rest of the night. Um, we get Jamie Hayter now taking on Tony Storm for the AEW World's Women Championship. This is a pretty short match. I mean, mm-hmm. Tony Storm comes out, Hayter's music plays, she doesn't come out. So they start her music again, because of course, that's, that's how you tell them, by the way, you got to come out. There's your music. Yeah, that always works. Ruby Soho and Soraya, though, drag Jamie Hayter onto the stage, working her arm over. They send her down to the ring. They all work over her shoulder bit at ringside. And finally, Tony Storm takes over solo. Shotgun drop kick to her arm against the steps that just look vicious. The match finally starts. Storm goes right after the arm. And in the meanwhile, Soraya in the background is removing a turnbuckle pad. Um, Britt finally runs down to the ring. I mean, this beatdown on Hayter went on for a long time. I don't mm-hmm. know what Britt was doing. Like, cheering with adam cole about their victory <laughs> i have no idea um but soho ignores this while hater hits a backbreaker on storm for two soho then sprays hater in the eyes with the ref distracted storm hits a running hip attack for two Sheeta now shows up and goes after soho with a kendo stick but hater nails the hater aid on storm but her arm is a mess and that's the arm she used for the hater aid and she cannot get to the cover in any kind of time due to the bad arm when she finally covers her storm kicks out for two and then Storm shoves Hater into the exposed turnbuckle, hits the let's sit down with Tony, and gets the three. What'd you think? Yeah, I mean, I didn't hate this match. Um, I thought that, uh, you know what, I'm switching uh, my order again. So number six should go to the Jeff Jarrett match. This will probably take the number seven spot. It wasn't it's terrible. Like, hey, Jamie here is actually really injured. So, like, kudos to her for going out there and actually, like, I personally think she shouldn't have wrestled, right? But apparently, because apparently it's her shoulder that's damaged. But if you notice, when I was watching the match, I'm like, okay, they're targeting one shoulder. This is probably obviously mm-hmm. not the hurt shoulder, right? right? Um, so it made sense. And yeah, okay, maybe the ending looked a little sloppy, but you have to remember she fought injured in this match. Yeah. So you got to give some credit to to them. Right? And hey, Tony Storm won. I'm mm-hmm. not upset, right? I, it it kind of makes sense. Now, and guess what? She's not the, we joked about this. She's not the yeah. second interim champion, two-time interim champion. Yeah, exactly. Um, she's the actual champion. And it's good. I kind of mm-hmm. like the the outcasts with the with the belts, right? Yep. Maybe they'll, they'll actually do something now. Um, But no, I didn't hate this match. I'll give it the number seven spot. Yeah, it's my number seven too. We seem to be agreeing not only on who's going to win all these matches, except this was the one match you said Hater was going to win. I did. And I, I said Storm, and it's the only reason. One. Yeah, it was the only match that we disagreed on, and yay, I win. But um. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I like Tony Storm with the belt here, too. Yeah. Um, what is this, like, Bizarro World? Wardlow, great match, Wardlow, yay, Tony Storm with the belt. And I I'm know. like, wait a second, what's going on? <laughs> what's um, so, yeah, I'm actually quite happy with all this stuff. Um, but, yeah, it was it was a good match. I also have it in my number seven spot. Um, I am also intrigued to see where this goes. And uh, I thought even the interference and shenanigans weren't terrible. They yeah, all made agreed. sense in the match, right? Yep. I do think that... that Jamie needs some better friends that show up earlier. Though. Yeah, Sheeta and uh, Bray taking forever to come down there. Like they, the Outcast beat her up from the ramp from yeah. know, backstage. Yeah, and brought her out <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and apparently, I don't know what Britt was doing. I don't know what Sheeta was doing. But anyway, next up we have the House of Black, Malachi Black, Brody King, and Buddy Matthews taking on the Acclaim for the AEW World Trios Championship. It was their uh, open challenge. They made it seem as though we didn't know who was coming mm-hmm. out, but the Acclaim music hits. Rap does a caster does a silly rap on his way to the ring um acclaim doesn't apparently also the acclaim says they don't need a dealer's choice stipulation because this is being fought under the house rules and so you know they're too tough right 
Bowen starts against Black. Malachi essentially toys with Bowen's outmaneuvering him and landing cross leg behind him. King yells, break it, as Black tags Matthew as a diving stomp onto Bowen's arm. Uh, King did this a lot, yelling, break it, whenever they were going after a body part. Bowens comes back with an elbow, though, hits the famous Sarah Matthews, tags Caster, hits Matthews with a drop kick as Caster uh, drops him on the apron. Caster covers him for two, and Matthews tags Black, though, who gets the advantage. They double team Caster, boot and lariat for two, but Caster comes back, sending King out of the ring, and they work over Black in the corner. They go for scissor me timbers, but Black actually catches the leg on the on the drop and puts him in a knee bar. Matthews does a diving elbow on Caster on the floor, and King destroyed Billy Gunn outside, including like a running cross body to gun in a chair against the barricade. It was crazy. Bowens reaches the ropes, uses them to get to his feet and break the hold because, of course, there's no rope breaks. He hits a neck breaker off his knee, but that hurt his own knee. He tries to tag, but there's no one there. And Black puts the knee bar back on him and then tags Matthews while he's got the knee bar locked on. It's a diving meteora. Matthews wrenches the knee, tags Black again. They just keep going after the knee. Bowens climbs the rope to get out again, hits a thrust kick on Black, but Black stomps his knee and tags Matthews, who, guess what Matthews does? Keeps working the knee. <laughs> this goes on for a while until uh, Matthews pulls him back. Like they tag in King. He nails a cent on, chops him. Bowens hits a drawbreaker and forearm, but King runs him into the corner. I mean, they worked over Anthony Bowens for a very long time. Yeah, um, yep. They, they set up Bowens for the Dante's Inferno, but Bowens fights out. He sends Matthews over the top, fights off Black, almost makes the tag, but King pulls Billy off the apron. Bowens hits a thrust kick on Matthews, finally makes the hot tag to Billy, who makes it, who takes it to all three of them, including a Famouser to King, Famouser to Matthews, but then he turns around and Malachi Black absolutely labels him with the Black Mask for the three count. What'd you think? Uh, number four spot for me, right? Again, top four. It's top, top, top five, and this match is great. Another great match by House of Black. These guys just need to be featured more. The right team won. You you mm-hmm. should never take the, the titles away from these guys. It's way too early. Like they literally just announced like this this you know uh, uh match type. So it's it's fantastic. And it's hey stupid on you. Uh, uh um it's, it's called um um the flame for not choosing anything. Oh you're too good for choosing a, a stipulation. All right, well good on you then. <laughs> you lost the match. Nope. Um. So yeah, no, but 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 all these guys are so good. Like House of Black, well, these guys know how to work. They know how to and Malachi leading them. Uh, Brody King, the Beast, and then you just have uh, uh, Matthews, who's just this guy is just absolutely fantastic, right? So great match. My number four spot. Yeah, it's, it was you know, awesome. I mean, they didn't even go for Witch's Band at ringside, oh, right? Funny. I mean, even the best friends did better than they did <laughs> with uh, picking steps. I'm telling you, why is no one saying the House of Black has to fight with one hand tied behind their back? Or they or, all have to fight handcuffed? Or, or Danhausen, you know, whoever wins, that Danhausen joins the House of Black. Right, exactly. Yeah, that's that's perfect, right? Like These, these are all good stipulations. <laughs> I like that. Those are way better than, oh, we don't need a stipulation. We're too good. Um, yeah, but it was a great match. I also put it in the number four spot. Um, great show by House of Black. Uh, three and three quarter stars for me. I really enjoyed this a lot. Yep. And then we get Jade Cargill versus Ty Valkyrie for the TBS championship. We both picked Ty to win this. We were mm-hmm. both wrong because we thought Jade was already 60 and 0. She was not. She was not. 59 and 0 going into this match. I see. Anyway, had I known that, I would have picked Jade. Yeah, but Jade has rappers, Taya has dancers. Jade does a dance number, but she doesn't hold a candle <laughs> to either Club Venus or <laughs> Cosmic Angels. That's my starter reference, people. They fight. Oh, I'll have one more coming for you later. Taya dives on Mark Sterling. Jade drops Taya with a kick. Taya hits a sliding German on Jade. That's what they called it. This is not a sliding German. She slid under her, pulled her leg from the rope, and she went down on her back. It was not a German suplex, people. Layla interferes, though, and allows Jade to kick Taya off the apron. Jade hits a spine buster for two, drops Jade on the barricade. She puts on a surfboard stretch until Taya fights out. Jade then hits a series of short arm lariats and a sleeper hold, but Taya counters with a blue thunder firecracker. Um, they called it a blue thunder bomb, but but... It was kind of a blue thunder bomb. She goes for the springboard, but Taya counters with the knees up. Taya puts on a Muda lock and then uses a scissor hole curb stomp for two. Taya then hits a spear in the road to Valhalla, but Jade kicks out. Jade comes back with a high kick and hits Jaded and gets the three. 
So she is now 60 and O. Yeah, this is, is this is this was the the worst match on the card. And this is exactly what I thought it was going to be, right? And there's really nothing for me to say. It's exactly the way you described it. It was slow, uneventful. We had shenanigans. And I and you knew, like well, not you knew. You could tell something was up. And I was like, yeah, I'm like Tony Khan loves Jade, right? Mm-hmm. Um and yeah, this makes zero sense for Tyre Valkyrie at all. Mm-hmm. So when she lost, I was like, okay, that makes that makes no sense. So it ha- something has to be happening. But so that yeah, but this yeah. match, this this match specifically was the worst match of the night. So it's your number ten because you didn't see the pre-show match. Yes, exactly. Okay, yes. For me, it is it is in fact my number eleven match. So, oh, wow. of, of okay. eleven. Yeah, this no, no, that Hardy's match was a lot more entertaining than this. Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, this this was this was not good. This was yeah, this was really. boring. This was this was. I don't know if it's just I was down after the House of Black match, but wasn't impressed. Things looked slow. Some things looked weak. Some things looked a little bit sloppy. Um, Taya, I, mean, I would say if there was a dark elevation, that's where she'd be going now. Yeah. Um, but there isn't. And uh, I guess there's just Rampage. So yeah, but but Mark Sterling gets a mic and he's yelling how no one can challenge her now. She wants another fight, blah, blah, blah. And music hits and Chris Statlander makes her big return and they fight the match. The match is on. Jade accepts the challenge. Statlander takes her into the ropes. Big kick. Jade fights out, hits a pump kick. But Chris Statlander counters Jade and hits the night fever, her tombstone pile driver finisher for three. Very quick match. Yeah, cheered. This was great. I had mm-hmm. fun. I'm so happy Chris Statlander's back. Um, and I'm happy the belt is off. Right? Yep. So, so you know, it's, um, this was, I, I enjoyed this match. I yes, really I, I can't wait for Chris Statlander to have yep. her title reign. I hope that she is like the female Orange Cassidy in this and defends the title constantly against great challengers. That would be really great. Um, I would love to see that. Just accept anyone who's actually decent and fight them. Um, this was awesome. Uh, not a lot happened, but hey, it was better than the the first match. And uh, I gave this probably this would be my number. I want to say nine. Is that where I'd be at in this list? No, it's better than the Hardys match. So let's see, 11, 10. <laughs> yeah, it would be number nine. Am I right? I don't know. I think I've lost track. But well, anyway, I enjoyed this match more than the uh, than oh yeah the Jericho match because I was so bored in Jericho match. Oh, because yeah. this, was so, this was so fast, right? So so I guess Jericho, I said had had nine. For me, so this would be number eight for me, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think I've, I think we've completely messed our numbers up somewhere I know, in that we, bottom yeah, part of the pay per view. So, but that's, that's okay. okay because you know yeah. what really matters the top, top five. Right? <laughs> so then, yeah, because we're here to bring the elite to you, not not the mess. Um, yep. So then we get MJF champion versus Darby Allen versus Sammy Guevara versus Jungle Boy Jack Perry for the AEW World Heavyweight Championship. Christian and I both said MJF were going to win the match. We were correct. Um, Jungle Boy comes out to his music. Pretty normal entrance for him. Sammy comes out, and then I saw him holding bristleboard, and I'm like, oh, this is awesome. He's doing the bristleboard again. (laughs) Like, really? But it turns out he had it for a very special reason, because he announces that Ty Mello is... Are they married yet? Yeah, Yeah. they are married, aren't they? His wife is pregnant. So that's kind of awesome. Congrats, Sammy. Congrats, Ty. All the best. Darby comes out, though, with a video where he's interrupting a wedding ceremony put on by an Elvis impersonator. Alan beat up someone with an MJF mask on as Alan and Elvis taped the guy up. <laughs> and then Alan rode into the arena wearing an Elvis jumpsuit, which and had kind of half a skeleton painted on it. But I would if someone had said that Darby Allen was ever going to play an Elvis impersonator, I would have laughed. But he did. <laughs> MJF came in with an orchestral opening that was kind of cool. Uh, his theme music uh, done orchestral style and lowered in as the devil on a throne. Tony just went, oh my God, <laughs> which was great. <laughs> Match starts, MJF rolls out immediately, but he's chased by all three guys and beaten to the floor. Guevara, Perry, and Allen all went at it high speed. They end up in triple kip-ups. Perry did a double springboard arm drag to send Darby and Sammy to the outside, but MJF nailed Perry with a lariat. MJF then signaled for a dive, ran the ropes, but did the flare strut and the Rick Rude hit swivel instead. Soon, Darby hit, Darby hit a tope suicida on MJF on the floor. Perry right behind him with three topes in a row. Guevara capped it off with an insane shooting star press to the floor. A unique Tower of Doom spot came next. Everyone went after MJF. 
Then Perry hit the poison run on Sammy for a two. Darby then charged at Perry and MJF in the corners, then hit MJF with a float over stunner and side headlock takedown for a two count. Soon after, Sammy hit Perry with a thrust kick on the floor and caught Darby mid-dive with a cutter. Back in the ring, Sammy hit MJF with a standing Spanish fly, then a frog splash for a near fall. MJF came back with a power bomb on Sammy for two, then hit a, a driver on Darby for a two. Now, I, I just want to point out something about that driver. Okay, that that is technically the uh, the, the peach bomb, and um, Momo Watanabe uses it as her finisher. So I would just like to point out MJF did it almost as well as Momo Watanabe. Okay, that's my second stardom reference for the night. MJF clearly a stardom fan <laughs> mjf then spat on darby and everyone went into this blazing fast high speed sequence of moves ending in all four guys down darby sammy and jungle boy then hit moves from their mentors scorpion death drop code breaker and kill switch ending in mjf hitting the crossroads on jungle boy for two mjf then grabs the mic and tells sammy he saw the cute cards sammy needs money and he tells him the offer still stands sammy goes you know what yeah and he agrees to lie down for mjf but of course it's a trick and he rolls mjf mjf up for two mjf though blocks the gth attack attempt tried to lock on salt of the earth but sammy countered into the walls of jericho perry went to break it up but uh, darby got him in the scorpion death lock so both mjf and perry could tap out to end the match mjf was about to tap but perry he grabs his arm stopping him and then we got this crazy spot where all four pillars lock submissions on each other at the same time in like this chain of submissions before mjf broke it up then we got canadian destroyer fest 2023 they all started hitting destroyers in each other ending in jungle boy vaulting off darby and sammy to land one on mjf for two Barry hit a tiger driver on Sammy, but Darby launched perry into the barricade did a double running lariat sending all three of them outside over the barricade Soon, uh, Sammy stopped Darby on the ropes and hit a Spanish fly to the floor, sending Darby into MJF and Jungle Boy to a loud holy shit chant. They all go back in and a strong style spot ensues, each of them challenging the other to hit him as hard as he can until MJF just pokes all three of them in the eyes. Sammy came back with his springboard cutter, Darby with a code red, and Perry with his version of the hidden blade on MJF. All three try to pin him, resulting in all of them exchanging rolling pins until Sammy absolutely laid out Perry with an implant DDT. Darby hit another code red, went for a coffin drop, and MJF crotched him. Then MJF hit a blonde bombshell power bomb off the top. It's like it's a tribute to Chris Candido, who's one of his uh, heroes, for a near fall on Darby. Sammy hit a cutter off the ropes on Perry, who rolled to the floor before Sammy could pin him. MJF hit a low blow on Sammy, pulled out the diamond ring, but Darby nailed MJF in the back with a skateboard and demolished him with a coffin drop, applied a side headlock for the pin, but Perry broke up the pin right at the last second. MJF tried to hit Perry with the AEW title as Sammy took himself and MJF to the outside. Perry was left holding the title, debated hitting Darby with it. Is he gonna, isn't he? No, he throws it away to apparently booze from the crowd. Mm -hmm. Darby then rolled Perry up for a near fall. Sammy came back and hit the GTH on Perry, but was immediately thrown outside by Darby. But as Darby went up for the coffin drop, MJF comes in, drapes the title across Perry's body, and Darby coffin dropped onto the title. MJF then rolled Darby up with a side headlock to get the three. What did you think? Um, this match is fantastic. This match was the best four way match I've ever seen ever, I think, ever. These four guys, if these are the pillars and if, if MJF actually sticks around, um, wow, wow, AEW, your future is very bright. Um, this is the match of the night. This is a hundred percent the match of the night. There they're like I know what the other match is, but this was the match of the night. Like they're these four guys, my like the match they put on unbelievable absolutely unbelievable um and mgf retained and i couldn't be mad about it could not be mad about it because he wrestled really well I'm, I'm gonna give him some credit here he was really good and you know in in his uh press conference uh, uh he actually said like you know he's bored right <laughs> and, and he he actually made a comment he's like you know when i when i talk about leaving and Tony Khan, like his head just like, oh, like yeah, 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 I right? saw it. Yeah. He, he's like, no, 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 no. People think I'm talking about WB and Nick Khan. He's like, no, no, I'm just bored, which is kind of cool. I was like, okay, yeah. all right, all right, okay. But um, yeah, th these four guys, they they stole the show. Like they they stole even what happened at the ending. They stole the show. So mm -hmm. congratulations, match of the night. These guys are fantastic. 
an absolutely easy five star match. One of the yeah. best wrestling matches I've seen all year. Um, just absolutely best four way I've ever seen. I can't. I I've, I racked my brain trying to think of another one, and maybe I'll come up with one later. But I cannot think of another four way that was as good as this ever. No. No. Just absolutely phenomenal. These four guys all gave absolutely everything, and it was the storytelling too. They hit all the points in the match. MJF played his character absolutely perfect. The things he was yelling in the ring, mm -hmm. the way he wrestled, it was just it was so smart, so well done, and so every move, every one of them hit was dead on perfect. Not a single miss, not a single mess up that I saw. And I mean, look, I'm not for this match moved at 100 miles an hour. Yep. So and that's the thing, too. This match moved, right? Like mm -hmm. there were points where these guys were just like in motion constantly, right? Yeah. Insane stuff on the floor, stuff in the ring, near falls, near falls, near falls. I mean, it was just those pinning sequences were crazy. These, these guys, this, like, I was just watching this going, this is why I love professionals. I say that with certain matches. This is another example. This match is why I love watching professional wrestling. They gave me everything I wanted in a wrestling match with this, right? Yep. Super athletic guys giving everything they got. And it was just amazing. Five stars, five stars, five stars, easy five stars. Um, I told you I was I was even using the Meltzer scale and I was yes. giving it six stars. <laughs> That's how much I was oh, giving I, it. I, I am not going to go over five <laughs> ever. It's just this is six. tied with every other five star match. Um, so yes, five stars, wonderful match, uh, match of the night. Which neither one of us said that because we had both picked the last match as the match of the night. But this is both of our match of the night. That's how these guys worked. They stole the show. Period. So that's great. Championship match, best match on the night, best as match. it should be. Yeah. So then we move to the Blackpool Combat Club. John Moxley, Brian Danielson, Claudio Castagnoli, and Wheeler Yuta taking on the elite. Kenny Omega, the Young Bucks, Matt, Matt and Nick Jackson, and Hangman Page and Anarchy in the Arena. Okay, this was Anarchy. Violet, uh, Violent Idols actually played Blackpool Combat Club out and just kept on playing Wild Thing. Uh, Mox uses the version done by another punk band X as his entrance, but these guys played it very close to that version. Don Callis joined the commentary team. The match was just chaos. Tons, ha tons happen. Um, you know, the match started with them all brawling in the stands. Referee Rick Knox was sitting near ringside, busted open the first bleeder in the match. Yeah. Page laid out Danielson with a buckshot lariat, took off his eye patch, throwing it to Danielson and stalked him down with a screwdriver before Yuta chop blocked him. Then we get all four of the elite doing Terminator dives onto the Blackpool Combat Club. Moxley is now bleeding from somewhere. The match went up the ramp and the Bucks super kicked the lead singer of Violet, Violent Idols to stop beside me. It played like three or four times before this, so it was pretty mm -hmm. funny. Um, the singer was wearing a Blackpool Combat Club t-shirt, which of course the Bucks took offense to and nailed them. The Bucks then both dove off the ramp onto Castagnoli and Utah. Back in the ring, Omega and Moxley beat each other up with parts of the announce table. Matt then hit his rolling Northern Light suplexes to Utah down the ramp, ending in throwing both of them into Castagnoli. Hangman hit an apron bomb to Yuta while Page and Omega worked over Mox until Page accidentally booted Omega. Moxley fought Omega up the ramp, threw him into the giant poker chip. The chip falls over and is, of course, covered in barbed wire on the back. Naturally, Mox immediately hits a snap suplex on Omega into the barbed wire and proceeded to stab Omega repeatedly in the head with a fork. And of course, now Omega is bleeding. Mox locked on the rear naked choke, but Omega fell back into the barbed wire to break it. Meanwhile, Castagnoli had Matt in the concession stands, nailed a giant swing, ending in throwing Matt into a garbage bin. I don't mean one of those worked garbage cans they use. I mean like an actual garbage bin in the concession stands. Um, they brawl outside the building where Castagnoli nails a gotch pile driver on Matt in the bed of a pickup truck. Um, we now see Nick and uh, Nick and Adam Page are both bleeding too. Mox hits a brain buster on a chair on Nick. Danielson gets a leaf blower into the ring, but Page comes back with a dead eye on Mox on the apron. Omega comes in with a trash can lid shield and goes all Captain America on the Blackpool Combat Club until Castagnoli stopped him by grabbing the rim of the trash can Winter Soldier style in a scene <laughs> right out of Captain America 2 Winter Soldier. Mox hits a King Kong lariat and pile driver on Nick for two and then put, put him in the Boston Crab. Yuta put a cross face on Nick at the same time. Matt finally comes back down the ramp after that pile driver in the pickup and hits a super kick on Mox. And when he hits the super kick, his shoe explodes, like literally. It was like more impressive explosion than the barbed wire death match, um, which of course knocks Mox flying. Hangman then nails the buckshot on Yuta as Mox brings in thumbtacks, Krishna's favorite weapon. 
the Blackpool Combat Club regains control, takes Matt's shoe off him, and then Atomic drops Matt onto the tax with his bare foot. His foot was covered in tax impaling it. Mox then hit the Death Rider. Nick tried to save Matt, but was hit with a cutter onto the tax. Omega came in and Castagnoli attempted the Ricola bomb, but Omega countered with a V-trigger. Then Danielson nailed him with the with a Busaiko knee, then hit another Busaiko knee on Page. The Blackpool Combat Club then put tax in Matt's mouth and Castagnoli uppercutted them right out of his mouth. Yuta then hit him with a German suplex for two. Omega and Page got up and they realized they're the last two standing right now. They fought back to back until Page hit Danielson with the dead eye and Omega hit the one winged angel, but Yuta made the save. Omega and Page then go after Yuta. A flurry ends in them setting him up for, for double buck shots, but Callus hands Yuta a screwdriver and he nails Page. Omega goes after Callus, but then a masked man enters the ring, lays Kenny out with a flying knee, and it's Konosuke Takeshita. Yuta then locks the seatbelt on Omega and gets the three count on Kenny Omega. Post match, Callus took off his belt, choked out Omega. Blackpool Combat Club looks a little confused at Callus mm-hmm. and Takeshita being there, but they put Yuta on their shoulders and Don and Takeshita stand together in the back over Omega. What did you think? Yeah, this is uh, like my one B or number two. Yeah, this match is great. Like if you, if you talk about anarchy, this was anarchy. Um, yeah, you know my th- thumbtacks, my favorite thing in the world. Oh God, it just it makes me wince when I see it. It's it was insane what these guys did to each other. It was so entertaining. Everyone was bleeding, except for Wheeler Yuta. He did not bleed in this match, but everyone mm-hmm. else bled in this match. Um, it was great. Um, it was fun. It was horrific. It was it was everything you'd want in Anarchy Arena match. And Kanosuke Takeshita, we said something was happening. Don Callis. Don Callis. Yep. Right? Um, I thought this was fantastic. And... Uh, yeah, n- my number two match. And just, just before you give your thoughts, um, do you see what happened after it went off? I heard that Kenny cut a promo, but I don't. I haven't heard it yet. So Kenny cuts a, cuts a, Kenny, uh, Kenny cuts a promo, and he says basically he's disappointed. He cut, thinks the fans deserve better. Um, he kind of wished for a better outcome. But he ended it by saying, but I have a couple of other friends. That can come, can that can help us even this out. So, people started chanting "Coda" in the arena. So, mm-hmm. it's happening. It's happening. But uh, yeah, fantastic match. Fantastic match. Yes, which can both be exciting and yet vaguely disappointing for us at Forbidden Door, right? Mm-hmm. Because it sounds like they may be holding off Osprey Omega to Wembley. Till Wembley, I know. Yep. And then they're going to do this Blackpool Combat Club Elite stuff with uh, probably Okada because Okada and Moxley have their whole thing going. And um, and maybe because he said a couple guys, right? Yeah, he, he said a he couple said, guys. He, he said we're, we're outnumbered now, but I have a couple guys. I Yeah, I so probably going to be Okada and Ibushi. Oh, okay. Okay. That would make sense, right? Because I mean, Okada and, and him have like a thing going. And, uh, you know, unless it's Okada and someone else. Yeah, who knows? Um, We'll see, but I'll, I'll bet Okada is one of them for sure. But yeah, no, I I thought I thought and I thought this match was great. Four and three quarters, uh, my number two match. Clearly, uh, solid shock moments. I mean, it's it's exactly what you want out of a match like this. It was anarchy. It was violent. It was hard hitting. It moved the story along. It was everything you wanted in this kind of match, right? These two get these two teams destroyed each other. There were lots of actually good wrestling moves in the match mm-hmm. too. Um, to catch this heel turn. You know, I mean, great. It sets stuff up. It sets stuff up. So, yeah, I mean, this was the, like these two matches at the end. I mean, you could have had anything before it. And these two matches would have been spectacular as the end of a pay-per-view. But overall, I thought very decent pay-per-view. There was some mediocre stuff in it. But, um, yeah, any Omega level moments for you on this? Omega level moments? Um, or uh, matches. Again, yeah, match. I'm, I'm giving Omega level match to the four pillars. They deserve it. These guys rocked it. Um yeah, again, as I said, when I when I said I I don't think I've ever seen a four like a four way match the way that played out. It's the truth. I've never seen one like that before. So I mm-hmm. I have no no choice. It's I give it the Omega level. Yep, I agree with you. That's the Omega level thing for me on this as well. Um, you know, I I, I might have given it to just to the fact that MJF used Momo Watanabe's move, but uh, you know, <laughs> you know. But yes, sure. very solid pay-per-view. Recommend watching those two matches. And if you any of the other ones we've mentioned, like the ladder match with Christian and, uh, and Wardlow, 100% worth checking out. 
Um, uh, most of the other stuff. I mean, the, the Battle Royal, I'd say that's worth fun. checking out. Yeah, yeah. Fun. yeah, and the House of Black match. Those would be the ones yeah. I'd say. Those are the five oh, matches. You go check out those top five, and uh, you've got the highlights from this pay-per-view. Everything else is pretty much skippable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But still good. I mean, yeah. there wasn't too much. I mean, the, the well, the Taya Jade match. But, oh, but yeah, anyway. Yep. But hey, they tried hard. They but did. that does bring us to the end of our review of Double or Nothing. And is the great one who, though he is sad, he has friends, always says, goodbye, everybody, and good night. Bang. Good night, everyone. <laughs>